Welcome insiders to Film Inside. I'm your host, Eric. I've shot this video like three times now, so let's get it right. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Canon XA20. The Canon XA20 is a beginner's and professional camcorder. It's relatively small, but packs a lot for what it is. So let's get into the review. So getting straight into the design of this camcorder, it's relatively a small camcorder. It's pretty easy to hold in one hand and pick up and move wherever. On the right side, there is your LCD screen. This comes and flips out all the way so I can look at my face right now and see if I'm in focus on the framing and whatnot. When you open up the LCD screen though, you're gonna notice a few things. First, there is your SD card slot. This has two SD card slots so you can put in two SD cards so you have a lot more room to store more data. There also is an infrared switch, so if you for some reason wanted to shoot an infrared video for a ghost hunt or something, you can do that. It's not actually true infrared, it just makes all the exposure options auto and puts it all in black and white. So I mean it does kind of work, but I don't really see the point of it. And there also is some custom buttons you can program, which there's custom buttons all over this camcorder. I'm not really going to talk about them much because if you want to use them, that's your own choice. But looking at the LCD screen though, it's a decent size, it's like 3.5 inches. There's again some more customizable buttons on the side. Looking directly at the LCD screen though, like I said, it's a decent size. It also is a touch screen, so I can maneuver my way through all the menus and whatnot. All the menus are basically the same as any other Canon camcorder these days, so I'm not really going to go over how to operate the menus, at least not in this video. If you want to see it though, let me know. But I do first recommend uh, going into the menus when you get this camcorder. And for me, uh, I click the function button, then record program, and I recommend putting it to a manual exposure mode. This is so you can really maximize all the functionality of this camcorder and always get the right exposure you want. At least that's for me, because I like controlling all my exposure. I also recommend scrolling down and going to image effect. Now we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I've noticed that this camcorder sometimes is kind of too sharp and sometimes it's also not saturated enough depending upon my shoots so i always go into image effects and first i change the contrast so i bring up usually the contrast sometimes even the color depth but i definitely recommend bringing down the sharpness to negative two this is so everything isn't as sharp because sometimes i feel like this camcorder can be a little bit too sharp on like just like facial features like sometimes it brings out like pores on my skin which you really don't want to see moving on though going to the back there is the record button there also is where you put your battery as well as a little function like switch thing so you can move your way through the menus if you don't want to use the touch screen there also is an electric viewfinder so if you pull it out it activates and you can look through it and see exactly what the camera sees and that's great and all it's not really a great evf but if you want to kind of check exposure if you're in a very bright environment it is pretty helpful then looking on the left side of this camcorder there's the handle as well as some inputs and outputs so i have my power and av input then moving down the camcorder there is other inputs for like usb for your mic your headphone out hdmi etc moving down to the front of the camcorder there obviously is the lens this lens has 20x optical zoom and has stabilization it's all great really no complaints there also is a lens hood that this camcorder comes with so you can just take it off easily and if you wanted to protect your lens just flip that switch and now it's closed now around the lens though there is a lens ring and you can program this to do two things you can either program it to be a focus ring so if you want to do manual focusing you can also program it to be a zoom ring so you zoom in and out when you turn it we'll get back to the rings a little bit later there also is another ring a little bit underneath it and you can adjust whatever parameters you want with it. There's a few you can set. I have it set up so I can adjust my exposure with it. But again, we'll get back to that later. But now moving to the top of the camcorder, there is your zoom rocker, as well as an on and off switch. And there also is a hot shoe mount, which lets you add an audio bracket to the top of the camcorder, which actually came with my camcorder. I guess I should call it a handle, but there's audio controls in it, which is really awesome. But before we get to that, First, at the top of the handle, there is a record button, so if you want to click that instead of the record button on the back. There also is a cold shoe mount, so I can have other adapters like a microphone, a light, something like that. 
But looking at the audio features this handle gives you, it gives you two XLR inputs, and on the opposite side of the XLR inputs is all your controls. So you can set their exact levels of the, each audio input manually. You can also switch it to automatic if you want. You'd also have the option to turn on and off phantom power. So my microphone right here, it's a shotgun mic, it needs phantom power, so I just flipped on phantom power, and now I have phantom power going to my microphone. And usually, like people with uh, DSLRs, they need a complete separate audio interface just to run a microphone. This has it all built in. Just overall, when it comes to audio, this camcorder is excellent in the audio department, way better than like a DSLR. Of course, there might still be room for an external recorder, but just the preamp in this camcorder is great. It's awesome that it can have XLR inputs and control like the levels, the phantom power very easily. Now with that said though, there are also internal microphones if you want to use them. Of course, internal microphones are nothing good, but if you want to listen to the internal microphones, well, here you go. All right, so now you should be hearing the internal microphone on this camcorder. Again, obviously it's not that great. It's a stereo capsule, but hey, I mean, if you have to use it, I guess it's not too bad. So there's the entire design of this camcorder. It's relatively compact, but still has a lot of features, buttons, dials, and whatnot. And before we even talk about video quality or anything, let's start bashing on the design a little bit. First, the LCD screen. Like I said, it's decent size and whatnot, but it's not really a great screen. I mean, I look at it, I look fine, whatever, but it's not high res enough to check focusing, at least in my experience. Also, the EVF isn't that great. You can't really check focusing there either. It's just good for checking exposure. And you can check exposure okay on the LCD screen and the EVF, but color reproduction on both the EVF and the screen are really bad. I mean, I'm looking at the screen right now and some things are darker than they should be. My face actually is kind of a very tint of red. And when I put it on my computer, it looks very different. So you can get used to it, but realize the color reproduction on both the EVF and the screen are not that good. The other thing I have to hate on is the dials and the rings. So like I said, there's a big dial or ring, whatever you want to call it, around the lens. And you can adjust it to be either a zoom ring or a focus ring. I have it set on focus because zooming is very impractical with it. But focusing isn't that much better. If I set it to manual focusing... You have to turn the ring a lot to get it to focus on the points you need. It's not as smooth as like a DSLR. The DSLR or a DSLR uses a actual mechanical ring, like it moves gears and whatnot, when the ring on this camcorder kind of detects what you're doing electronically and depending on how fast you turn the ring or how slow, it doesn't always focus to where you want it to. Sometimes I have to turn it a lot before it actually gets to where I want it to focus to. And that's the same problem with the dial below the main ring. This dial is very small and I use it to adjust my exposure, but sometimes you still have to turn it a lot to get it to actually go to the exposure you want it to. With that said, that small dial really isn't that big of an issue, but it's still not very practical. Realize you can obviously get used to it, and it is usable to a degree. It just takes some time to get used to and isn't always practical depending upon what you're doing. Of course, I come from a DSLR background, so I'm used to a little bit different things. But still, it's nice that these features are there. But okay, so now we talked about the design, we talked about audio. What about video quality? Well, right now I'm shooting with the Canon XA20. What do you think? Right now, I'm basically in a studio environment. I mean, I have a lot of lights around me. Again, it might not be perfect, but it should look pretty decent. But let's roll a few more videos just for you to get an idea of how this camera actually performs. And if you have the handle on the camcorder, there's this red light that turns on every time you record. I believe you can turn off in the settings, but if you're going for a discreet kind of video, you might want to remember to maybe turn that off. So there you 
you go, there are some video clips. What do you think overall of this camcorder's quality? In my opinion, I think the video quality is pretty good. I mean, it's a professional camcorder, so you should honestly be expecting a decent amount, especially for its price tag of around $2,000. So I'm relatively happy. In a bright environment, it does great, and even in low lighting environments the video quality is still pretty decent. Of course, the specific video quality isn't all that matters, because there's more involved, like the sensor. The sensor in this camcorder is very small, and a lot of camcorders do have small sensors, which, that's just a tradition of camcorders. With that said, nowadays, camcorders are starting to receive bigger sensors, like a one-inch sensor, which I would love to have in this camcorder, but it doesn't, it has a very small sensor, which honestly is a little bit surprising because the, the low lighting capabilities of this camcorder are pretty spot on, especially compared to like my Canon T3, which isn't amazing at low light, but it's pretty good. It also has a very big sensor. So this small sensor is definitely being utilized properly, especially with the processor behind it. With that said though, because there is a very small sensor in this camcorder, you're not gonna be gaining a whole lot of depth of field. So if you wanna be blurring out your backgrounds when you're sitting in front of a camera, this isn't the camcorder for you. You'd rather get a DSLR or a really high-end camcorder. Of course, you could just zoom into your subject and get some depth of field that way, but it's gonna be nothing compared to like a full-frame DSLR. So just overall, if you're gonna be planning to do a lot of filmmaking with this camcorder, you might wanna rethink that because usually in filmmaking, actually making short films, full feature movies, etc., you probably wanna have more control of your depth of field which you really don't have in a camcorder like this. So with that said, this camcorder definitely isn't really designed for filmmaking. If it does work for your films, great, but this camcorder I feel is really made for freelance videography as well as broadcasting. So if you wanna record a concert, if you wanna record a football game or any sporting events, or even shoot videos like weddings and real estate, this camcorder could be excellent for. But just at the end of the day, it depends on what do you want to use this camcorder for. Even though this camcorder has great features, a great design, realize also that what you buy is what you're kind of stuck with. I like the fact that my main camera is a DSLR, so I can adapt and upgrade kind of over time. So I can adjust the lenses, I can buy a new lens and get a completely different video kind of style just depending upon my lenses. I also have a lot more control over depth of field, which personally I like, that might not matter to you. Of course though, if audio is a big deal to you and you don't want to deal with external recorders and whatnot, by far a camcorder like this is a great way to go. The XLR inputs on it are great. But yeah, there is the Canon XA20. There's the review of it overall. I like it. Personally, this actually isn't my actual camcorder. I just borrow it a lot from my school. But I do like it and will I be getting it? Probably not. $2,000 is a lot of money for me, when honestly my Canon T3i gets very similar image quality. Of course, there are still benefits to having this camcorder, like audio, like having an all-in-one package that I really won't have to upgrade down in the future. But for me, I still rather stick with the DSLR. Maybe I would consider getting this as a B camcorder, but it's still a lot of money, for me at least. It might be well worth it for you. And again, the pricing on this camcorder is around $2,000. So, might be a lot for you, might not, depends, but overall, I would say I would recommend this camcorder. It definitely is good, depending upon what you're doing. Now, if you want to see any other in-depth things about this camcorder, about the design, about how it operates, etc., leave that information or questions, comments, concerns in the comment section below. Also, like this video, subscribe, share the fans, tell the channel any way you can. If you want to see any other cameras, want to see any other comparisons or whatnot with this camcorder, and other cameras, let me know in the comment section below again. Anyway, guys, that is the review of the Canon XA20. Hope you liked it. My name is Eric, this is Tech Inside, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.